My name is Katrina Borsato. Thank you for tuning in this evening. Uh, we have the lovely Anna that has come back uh, to show us some more regional dish dishes. Welcome to you, Anna. Buonasera. Welcome. And uh, Michele for twisting her, her arm as well, I think. Buonasera. Did we frighten you last week? A no, little bit. <laughs> it's a bit daunting, isn't it? It is. But I hope our viewers uh, had the opportunity to find some of that chestnut flour and make that castagnaccio because it was fantastic. She says it was food for the poor people, but I think it's food for people like you and me, Michele. What do you think? Poor. I want that on the menu <laughs> every day this week, okay? <laughs> now, Michele, what uh, sort of things are you going to be doing this evening? Okay, uh, tonight we're going to um, do some uh, red mallet again, Trigi, because uh, we were saying that it's really, it's really important. Uh, traditional dish. Traditional. Oh, yes. We're going to do a alla Livornese, very simple, with the tomato and. Um, is Livornese leghorn in English? It is, isn't it? I yeah. think it is. Yeah. It's leghorn. Yes. It's an unusual translation, isn't it, mm. for the name? Pretty fun. Mm. Leg home. Ah, wow. And uh, this way is a really basic way of cooking with, with tomato. Actually, Anna will say even uh, bacala is nice, a la limonese, mm. done the same See. way. So you can change your fish if you want. But Anna, if my mother was here, uh, yeah. the bacala da Vicentina, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no. everybody on the, you know. Uh, they've all everybody. got a story, haven't they? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And then we're going to do some, uh, uh, una salsa con l'anatra. Uh, duck sauce for a duck ragu for a pasta. Yes. And um, and then Anna is she's going to do something sweet again. Yeah, mm. la torta di riso. All right. Also, maybe we can also mention uh, another, another important uh, ingredient in Tuscany is the beef, which is the canina that you were mentioning last week. Yes. Which is uh, really important and yes. um, is a special breed. And uh, it's uh, it's. They've got I mean, sort of bony color. Do I look like one of those tonight? <laughs> <laughs> you can look uh, only one. I think there was the record actually. This uh, the the muscles of this uh, this uh, animals are are really big. And actually, there was a record that one one thousand and seven hundred kilo or something like that it was like a huge uh, animal. Yes, because they've got uh, it, it. Is it it's sort of not really big bone structure, but lots of muscles. Lots of is that muscles, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the canine, have got that really fawny color, haven't they? It's like a fawn color. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the color of And the of big, them. Uh, big horns. And the big horns. And famous for La Bistecca Fiorentina, mm. which is the famous yeah, T-bone. Yeah. Vero? Yeah. They're normally about what? Uh, uh, 750 grams. That's or right. 500, yeah. yeah. And quite an expensive dish in Italy as well, isn't it, Michele? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, shall we get stuck right into it? Okay, so we start with some uh, extra virgin olive oil. Yes. Now we get the mallet lightly Okay, in the flour. Anna, is he doing it the right way? I think so. Make okay. sure, what, what, one thing that I can say is sometimes when we flour fish or meat, we tend to exaggerate a little bit, and that's yeah. when we burn always the sauces. Okay. So always, yeah, flour, but you know. Lightly. Yeah. Is that just plain flour, Michele? Plain flour. And yeah. we don't salt it or anything, season Sorry it? Sorry, this side. All right. Morning. So we just. What we're doing, that's uh, probably one of the differences with, uh, with the other dish that we did, that we actually, you know, sear the fish first on, on oil. One side or the other. Mm -hmm. Probably do it for a few minutes. So does this have to be cooked through the fish, Michele, or just...? Uh, not really, because then we finish it in the sauce, yeah? Oh, with a little bit of uh, napoli. Oh. So we just sear it off. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this on the side. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what I was saying before, if you don't burn the sauce with uh, killing it with flour, now we can actually can actually add uh, some garlic here. Yeah. Beautiful. And then we're going to um, just a little bit of parsley, a little bit of wine. Always careful when you add the wine. Evaporate. Beautiful. Yeah, a little bit of chili. I'm going to add some uh, some tomato here. Now there's no seeds in that, Michele. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what I will, even before last week, what we said is uh, what you can do if you use fresh tomato, or even pure tomato, just take the seeds off because it's actually much uh, much better. Okay. Better consistency as well. It's thinner. Right. Mm. And Michele, there's one thing we should tell our viewers that mullet, uh, the whole secret behind mullet is freshness. 
okay? Yeah. You can't buy it frozen, you can't freeze it. It should be eaten literally within a day mm. that it's caught. I think that's the most important thing about red mullet. Yeah, otherwise it tends to taste very... Um, they get the bitterness as well. Yeah. Yes, Very absolutely. muddy as well. well. Yes, they have a muddy taste, you're quite yeah. right. So what you do, you just put it there. And stew them softly. And let's see, you let it cook, you put it... Mm. All that it takes probably simple. another, what, well, six minutes? I'll put the lid on for a few minutes. And uh, say five minutes will be cooked. Yeah, I think it's a good time to pass it on to James. <clears throat> for, so he can tell us about the quality of this fish or maybe other fish that you can use. Clams, they are located in Ackland Street, St Kilda. Mm -hmm. And I think they've opened up a new place in Albert Park, Michele. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, So you I can go so. down there and actually get the, you, they'll cook the fish for you as well. So you don't mm -hmm. even just have to buy it in the uh, fresh state. I think a great thing is that uh, James will probably have a lot of customers asking for red mullet now because uh, it's probably not a very much used fish in uh, the Aussie diet, is it, Michele? Yeah, mm -hmm. no, no. Very not Italian. Cool. Over to you, James. Thanks, Katarina and Michele. I'm back here again with Harry, and today we're gonna tell you a little bit more about this lovely fish we have in front of us here. This is known as a red mullet, and it's a great fish for winter. It has a very unique flavor, so when you're using it in any recipes, it's very hard to find a substitute. So always look out for it. Now, despite its name, it's not actually a member of the mullet family. Um, this fish is actually a goat fish. Um, a, it's called a goat fish. You can see it's got a little bit of a beard there. That's where the name name comes from and they use that to sense disturbances uh, in the water and on, on, the, uh, on the bottom of the, of the ocean. Now these are an inshore fish so they're, they're not always readily available. It has to be quite still and quite calm without any wind for these fish to be caught. Okay so Harry why don't you uh, show the viewers how to clean one of these lovely fish up. I'll be happy to James. And they can see how it's done. Yep. Now I would have thought this is more the average size. Is that getting a bit big for this species, do you think? Uh, well, they don't grow much bigger than this, James. Uh, this is about the largest. Not much bigger than this. It's actually a good size. Yeah, for great red, size. For a red yeah. mullet. But no, they don't grow too much bigger than that. I'll just show the viewers how to clean it. Because they're quite small, they can be a little bit fiddly. And they're a very, very delicate fish. You have to be very careful not to bruise the flesh. Um, just be, be a little bit careful, it does have a, quite a few bones in it and I wouldn't really recommend um, serving it up for children. What do you, what do you think? Harry? No, no, well I got a bone stuck in my throat last week. Really? Yeah, you've got to oh. be very careful with it. Yeah, um, so not for children but for adults absolutely no problem at all and it's got a fantastic flavour and I'm sure you'll all enjoy it. So once again, thanks very much and thanks, thanks a lot Harry. Thank you James. And we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Six minutes it's later, okay, we can one. take the lid off. Mm. Yeah, smell good. Yeah, heavier. Mm. And then what you do is basically, you just put it on the plate. Quick, easy meal, Mikkel, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Obviously not for young children. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because no. Got A lot of bones. And oh. I think uh, even the sauce is going to be, uh, the flavour is going to be amazing. Mm. Probably, probably should take a break before we do the duck sauce, what do you think? Yes, I think it's an opportune time to cross over to our sponsors for a commercial break.